Oh hey, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a Q&A because I thought how awesome would it be if you guys could ask me some questions and I could sort of reflect on some of your weird questions and just sort of, I don't know, learn something about myself while, while you learn something about me. So let's give it a shot. I actually did get quite a lot of questions so I don't think I'm going to be able to go through all of them but I will try. So let's start with the... Okay, so I'm just going to start from the bottom. These aren't in order. Uh, so Naomi Sanders asks, uh, dream festival lineup, uh, you could include your band in this lineup if you want. Uh, dream festival lineup, um, okay, definitely Tesseract, because I recently watched Tesseract, uh, play a live show, it was like a recorded live show, that, uh, uh, Century Media, I think, or Sumerian, posted it on their actual YouTube channel, and it was phenomenal. So definitely Tesseract. I've seen Periphery play live on YouTube a few times. They haven't really come, they haven't come through my town or anywhere fucking close. So I've not had a chance to go see them. Um, so Tesseract, Periphery, Devon Townsend, I've seen him live. He kicks ass. Trivium, Gojira, Machine Head, Sky Harbor. They they definitely need to go. There's like loads of bad, but them the those ones primarily. Shokran, for example, uh, Anis OK. Um, Destiny Potato, <laughs> who, by the way, I think are writing a new album, so can't wait for it. So yeah, you know, and then me headline because Monroe, best band in the world. Okay, next up, uh, Leah Sean Sheen, Leah Sheen. I don't know. Uh, what's your favorite cartoon and anime? My favorite cartoon, either s I have a few. I have a few favorite cartoons, and for different reasons. SpongeBob SquarePants. The first two, maybe three seasons, anything, any season released after the movie is garbage. But the first two seasons, first two or three seasons. Adventure Time's pretty cool. Regular show is pretty cool. Fairly Odd Parents was pretty awesome. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy because it was just so fucking manic. Like it was insane. It was just insanity from start to finish. Grim and Evil and then it became the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I don't know why they did that. I think maybe Evil was more popular than no, I think Grimm was more popular than Evil, and I think they can see, like, the analytics of a TV show of when, like, people stopped watching. So I think they just made it Grimm, which was a good decision because it was a fantastic fucking show. Kate Watts, uh, what's your most embarrassment moment? I think you meant most embarrassing. Um, oh, Jesus. I was trying to think of an embarrassing moment, but to be quite honest, I think my mind has just blanked them out, and I, I prefer to keep it that way. Uh, Jude asks, what comics are you reading currently or want to read? So I've been reading the Harley Quinn Rebirth. That's pretty cool. Not all of it. I've stopped buying comics for like the past couple of months, and I've missed out loads of issues. I was reading the Batman Rebirth. Eh, it's not great. I'm not a big fan of Gotham Girl and Gotham. I thought that was really lame. The stories are great. But the characters are sort of lame. Superman, that was pretty awesome. Uh, I have Deathstroke, but apparently they've changed his character a lot and it's not really worth reading. I did what I read, I kind of liked. But what do I want to read? Well, I have the first couple of issues of Civil War 2, which is the new Marvel thing, which is the, the movies will eventually probably, the, the movies are probably going to do this like next year or something. Um, but Civil War 2, which I think is like eight issues, I have the first five. I am really enjoying it and I, I want to read the rest because it's finished now. I think all of the issues are out. So I just need to read it. I just need to buy the rest of them. But they're a little more expensive than the other comic books because they're like, there's more to it. But it's a fantastic story. And I don't like Guardians of the Galaxy anymore because they're on the, the Republican side, basically. So there's there's two sides. In Civil War II, there is um, this storm that goes around and it sort of awakens the latent abilities of human beings. Anyway, so the storm comes along and this one kid gets psychic powers, right? So he is able to see into the future and like see crime and death happen before they happen. So Captain Marvel, not Shazam, so she's like running this world police thing and uh, she has like a, a, a team of superheroes and she flies around the world like sort of stopping crime and she is like stressed out and it's like it's a 24 hour day job and she's like how can I, you know, people don't care that the world is saved, they only care when I fail. And she sort of sees this psychic mutant as a chance to sort of make sure that she never fucking fails. But then Iron Man thinks the opposite. He's like, you can't just arrest... It's basically the minority report, okay? So it's like, you can't just arrest someone because they technically haven't done anything yet. So they're, they're fighting over this new psychic and, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say what happens. So Iron Man does like an algorithm breakdown of this psychic's powers or whatever. And it turns out his brain only makes like 
uh, hypothetical situations based on facts and data instead of actually seeing the future. So it's it's only what is likely to happen, not what will happen. And even though Captain Marvel learns this, she still uses his psychic powers to sort of arrest people and she gets way out of hand and the Guardians of the Galaxy are on her side. So I'm not a big fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy anymore because that's the Republican side, you know? Like the, the, the police, the globe kind of e ethic. You know? Ah, okay, so next question. Gina, are you still planning on running the marathon? Good question, because I asked myself this a couple of days ago. I was like, oh my god, it's March now, and I still haven't- I haven't been running since the end of January. Probably not. Um, I think my running physique is long gone. Um, I used to do like 12 kilometers a day, uh, and then I'd go home, and then that was like- it was literally nothing to me. <laughs> like, 12- 12... I just went home after 12k because it took so long. Or I got bored or whatever, but like, I could, I could run so much, and then I didn't run for ages, and then I ran the marathon. You know? That was when I ran the marathon back in 2012. And I, I was hurt at the end of the marathon, but like, I still did it, even with no training. I was just such a runner. But for the past three or four years, I've been weightlifting and like, doing different types of training. Um, so I'm sort of like, building muscle now, and I've changed, my, my mindset's changed. You know, like, lifting weight is fun. Building a physique is fun, getting stronger is fun, and I, I don't find any fun in running anymore. I felt as though I was failing by not running, but I'm actually succeeding by lifting, you know? I've just changed what my fitness goals are, and I enjoy being strong, and I enjoy building muscle and seeing the instant changes. I'm still going to do cardio, but I'm probably in, in like a hit form, a high intensity interval training, or you know, running short bursts of two kilometers, three kilometers or whatever, but mainly weightlifting, and it's weird that you should bring that up because I'm also going to be going back to the gym real soon, so yay vlogging down the gym again. Christina K. Angel, what is goth exactly? I think there is so much misconceptions. Yes, there is. Um, I have no idea what the fuck goth is because no one seems to know what it is either. You know, you ask one person what goth is, they'll give you a completely different answer to this elitist cunt over here. You know, everyone has a different answer, answer as to what it is. It's, you're goth if you listen to goth music. I hate goth music. So, by their definition, I'm not goth at all. You know, goth is the fashion. Some of the goth fashion I don't like to wear because I think it looks ridiculous on someone who's built. And, you know, by their definitions, I wouldn't be goth either. But I feel as though goth is a much more broader term now and has a much more wider array of music in it that people sort of refuse to allow in to the whole goth thing, even though it fucking is. And if it was, if that band, if this, if this modern goth band was going at the same time as The Cure and Joy Division, then it would be considered goth. It's only being considered not goth because of the era that it was in, which is completely fucking ridiculous. So, I don't know, I, I wish I could create a new word for what I am, because I, I, I kind of hate goth, you know? I hate everyone, that, a lot of people that are in it are, are just dicks. And they're really exclusive and elitist, and I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm sick and tired of all these rules and regulations. I just want to wear black, and I just, I just, you know, I, why? Just stop. Stop. Wearing black clothes is cool. There we go. Goth is no longer goth. It's just cool. I wear cool fashion. Uh, James Hanlon, uh, what are all the types of music you like and how do they inspire you slash motivate you? Well, when I was a kid, um, the band that really got me into metal was Trivium. And uh, whenever I heard their Ascendancy album, I think the first song I ever heard was uh, from, uh, like Light to Flies. And then I was like, what is that band? And then I sort of looked away and looked back and the name, because it used to be on TV and there was no Spotify back then. And like the name of the band on the TV, I, I missed it. And for two years, I didn't know who who that band was. I just knew what the, the music video looked like. Two years later, I'm rehearsing in a friend's house. I look at the TV. That band is on. It's like Light to Flies. And I was like, fuck, it's Trivium! And then for a very long time, I was like, unless it gets metal, it's shit. Pop music isn't metal, so it's shit. Classical music isn't metal, so it's shit. Jazz, not metal, so it's shit. And, you know, I think every 14, 15, 16-year-old angsty cunt goes through that shit. Um, and then when I sort of grew the fuck up and I became an adult, I was like, man, prog is awesome and, you know, jazz is awesome and classical music is really awesome. And I still think pop music is garbage. But ultimately, like, what I enjoy has really widened. And it's, all of it inspires me, you know? I, I sort of, I really enjoy the, the themes and the emotions that a lot of albums choose. You know, like, you'll have a band and it's like, you just can't, 
decide what genre they are. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, Deer and Grey are like that. It's like, what are you? You know, Periphery are like that. Like, they're moving away from gent. They're not as gent as they used to be. Like, they're getting really proggy and it's just super weird stuff going on and I, that's the kind of band I want to be. I want to be like, what genre are you? I need to define you. So that's what, that's why I want to be. I want to be like, what is Monroe? I don't know what it is, but I know I like it. Uh, Helena Costello, uh, what made you decide to go to an eight string? I think you mean seven, I play seven. Uh, seven string guitar, and um, what do you find helps you make riffs? Um, okay, so I had a loan taken out. So I took out a loan to get this studio that I'm still paying off, by the way. <laughs> and uh, this was like five years ago. And uh, basically I was just about to buy all this new equipment and the last thing I was gonna get was a guitar, but I had been massively into Trivium and Machine Head and all six string players. I'm kind of tri Trivium play sevens now, but I was I was playing their six string songs. So just as I was about to buy all of that stuff, I got like a, f a few weeks prior, a few months prior, I got like massive into periphery, like huge into periphery. And I was just like, I bought the merch and the CDs, even though I had no money. And what I did was, is I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna buy a seven string. So I bought a seven string. I'd never played one. No, that's a lie. I had played one for a total of five minutes before I had, before this. So I, I had like literally, almost literally no experience of a seven string at all. And then I bought the Schecter that I have over there in the corner. So this is my first ever seven string and it's a pretty beast seven string because as you can see, it's a set neck. Well, it's like, it looks like neck through, but it's a set. I wish it was neck through, but it's almost one solid block of mahogany. So it sort of weighs a bit, and it's a fantastic guitar. It took me a little while to figure out how to do the chords and stuff, and how to change all of my scales, and also, most seven strings, especially uh, Schecter's, they have a longer neck, uh, which results in the, like, the lower B, which for me is G sharp, um, cause it's, it's down tuned, uh, drop tuned, to uh, drop G sharp or A flat. So it just means that string has like extra bass response. It's not so, hollow sounding because I hate it when you tune a six string like a 24 and a half scale six string too low and you sort of lose the low meatiness of, of the of the the j -j 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 -j. it's like it's all gone but the seven keeps it even though this thing is like hella tuned low it's still really really deep and basically I get inspiration for riffs by trying to play a seven string <laughs> so I just look at the amount of strings I'm like fuck I have like a whole extra string and frets worth of stuff to play around with. Let's see if I can play this. Oh wait, I can't play this, but I did come up with this thing. Steph Havoc asks, uh, have you ever thought if you took a different path in life, where do you think it would have led you? Uh, also, I love your vlogs. Keep it up. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. Um, I'm not entirely sure what other path in life I would have taken. I can't imagine what I would be doing if I wasn't doing music or YouTube. I think maybe I would have done something else creative. I'm just a creative person. I've always wanted to make stuff. And even when I was like, my most favorite classes in school were, you know, art and music. And then when I left school, I did a, a completely pointless, just so superfluous, it's just pointless. Music technology ND diploma in college, pointless. You don't fucking need an ND di music diploma to do anything. It's, look, music is just something you do. You don't fucking, here's my CV. Can I do music now, please? Pointless. You don't need an ND. It's just killing time. It's just a way to go to college and do something fun to keep your fucking parents off your back. So yeah, I think I would always be doing something creative. If not, I'd probably be like a personal trainer. I was nearly a personal trainer, uh, which a lot of people seem to be over here. There seems to be some sort of personal training program that is very accessible to Northern Irish people. So I think, I would have, I would be doing that. That's that's fun, but I, I'm just not built for like office jobs. I just can't, I can't do them. I, I can't switch my brain off and just become a drone, like a mindless fucking drone for some pompous tie wearing cunt who thinks he's better than me, even though he's only 18 years old. I just, I don't feel like doing that. I can't do that. I have such a problem with authority. That was been that's been made apparent on multiple occasions by being fired because I've been told I've told basically told the boss to go fuck himself. Uh, young Morg, favorite and least favorite genres of metal. Um, okay, so this is a bit of a loaded question. I I feel as though I'm gonna get some hate for this because my least favorite genre of metal has got to be like black metal. I would say death metal, but I sort of I love melodic death. Melodic death metal is like a great genre of music, especially like. 
Gothenburg Swedish melodic, melodic death, like in flames and shit. That shit's amazing. But pro probably like, you know, black metal and like grindcore and all that. Like, th their fans get so anal. They get like so cunty with it, don't they? They're, they're such d dicks. It's like, uh, do not listen to I fist my mother with a fucking gardening glove. Like, all these ridiculous names and the lyrics are about like fucking a corpse in the ass and like I don't know I don't even know if that is blackmail whatever whatever uh cannibal corpse is or whatever like I hate that shit it's so juvenile it it's just I don't know it, I'm not saying it sucks I'm just saying I don't like it if you but a lot of people really like it but that's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of metal fans are just like, yeah, you know, I like metal. I like a lot of stuff. But black metal fans are like, I fucking, I like black metal. Fuck you. You know, they get like really in your face about it. And if you don't like black metal, fuck you. You're not, you're not metal. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, get off my fucking case. Uh, Sophie Burrows, what's your favorite city slash country to visit? Not much of a traveler. Uh, unfortunately, in my life, I've never been that. I've never had that much access to money. So. A lot of people have traveled because, you know, their parents are all rich and it's like, oh, life isn't worth living if you can't travel. Here, here's a backpack and travel through Thailand like I did as a boy. Fuck you. Okay, not everyone has that kind of money. But like, I would have liked to have done stuff like that. In fact, a lot of my friends have done that and I know exactly how they've done it. It's because they had rich fucking parents and they're just like, oh, no, you can't, you can't, you know, leave school and go straight into a job. No, no, do what I did as a boy and like, here's a load of money, son, and go backpacking through Europe. Um, I do, however, really love Brighton. I love Brighton. Um, I really like London. In fact, London's my favorite city. Uh, Kristen Morrissey, bucket list of travel destinations. Um, I want to go to America. I would like to live in America if Donald Trump would A didn't exist or B was assassinated. Do you know what? No. A. <laughs> I mean, sure, kill Donald Trump, whatever. And you can quote me on that. But A, I'm, I'm, I kind of wish he never existed because even if he was killed, the fact is he still made it that far, which means there are that many shithead people in America. And I don't want to be anywhere near those kind of people. Um, so I would, you know, I would have liked to have lived in America if, you know, y'all weren't stupid. LA, New York, definitely New York, Oregon because of the countryside, uh, Canada. I'd like to go to Canada, Hawaii, never been to Paris, I'd go to Paris. Pretty much the whole world, who wouldn't want to travel the entire planet? Yeah, I'd be game for that, the whole planet. Okay, one last question, because this has been going on for quite a while. Uh, okay, The Darkness, not the band. <laughs> that would have been really cool. Who did you idolize as a child besides your parents, asks The Darkness. I think the most, like, prominent one, or at least the first real person, was Angus Young from ACDC. I wanted to be Angus Young. <laughs> Because whenever I first got into playing guitar, I used to play ACDC. That's how I started playing guitar. Um, but before that, I wanted, like, the, the person that I most idolized was Zidane from Final Fantasy IX. Zidane from Final Fantasy IX was everything that I wanted to be. A ragamuffin boyish traveler who you know, got the ladies and, like, <laughs> slain monsters and stole money and, oh, wooed the ladies. You know, like, he was just the ultimate bad boy and I wanted to be Zidane or datum, I couldn't figure out which one. <laughs> so thank you everyone for your amazing questions. I hope my answers were, you know, sufficient. And I will be doing another Q&A for all of those uh, who didn't get their questions answered because there was a few questions there, but I, I couldn't make my way through all of them. So I'm gonna go vlog now and I'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, you can have a great day. If you just make it a great day. Goodbye everyone.